Thanks, Sue. I'm so excited you're here. Today, we're going to be talking about accounting for restricted grants, when and how to record properly. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer. I know many of you have been here before, but if this is your first time, I'm going to show you how you can engage on the next slide. As Greg said, we are recording this and we will send the video replay tomorrow with the slides. If you don't get the video replay, we do have a YouTube channel, so it'll be on our TechSoup YouTube channel. If you have a question, Greg already gave you permission to put it in the chat. He has lots of team members here to keep up with you. You can put them in the QA, Q and A as well. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. I'm gonna get ready to introduce Greg. Uh, he's no stranger here at TechSoup. He is the, I said the president of QuickBooks. He is not the president of, of QuickBooks. QuickBooks <laughs> made easy and greatboston.com. Welcome Greg and I'm looking forward to this webinar. Thanks All right. Oh, is that was that your intro? Ah, yes. Apparently it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much. Please find the chat and tell me who has seen me teach before. Give me a yes or give me a no in the chat. I'm just kind of curious. Yes or no. Uh, looks like a lot of people have seen me teach before. My guess is a lot of you came to our three-day webinar series, and uh, that's what you're here for. Um, so just to kind of say again real quick um i am a cpa that specializes in nonprofits, uh and uh we have an accounting firm in atlanta georgia and all we do is help nonprofits. we do regular bookkeeping for nonprofits. we do 990s for nonprofits. we do financial statement audits for nonprofits. we do one-on-one consulting for nonprofits. Uh, we also have a company called quickbooks made easy uh, QuickBooks Made Easy is a different company from um, uh, from my accounting firm. It's called QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. And all we do here is teach nonprofits that are using QuickBooks. Now, I know not everybody here is using QuickBooks, um, but just kind of throwing it out there because we have all kinds of training uh, and um, uh, both for people that are using QuickBooks and QuickBooks online. So um, the name of my accounting firm, Miss Boyd, is Greg S. Bossen, CPA, B-O-S-S-E-N. So we'll go back to the slide deck. Um, but what we do at QuickBooks Made Easy is we have streamable training products. We have tech support. We also have live webinars and webinars. You are welcome, Miss Boyd. Uh, we also uh, have some other services that I'm going to give you a discount on. But right now, let's see what we're going to cover today. Okay, so here's today's agenda. Is everybody ready for me to start? Let me know, and then I'll start because we only have an hour. All right, here we go. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over when to record restricted grants, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk. Now, I, I should tell you ahead of time, this is not uh, an hour that's just for people that are using QuickBooks. This is like anybody who is a nonprofit and wants to understand about grants and when to record them, that's what we're going to cover, okay? Because this is Brainiac stuff, okay? This is theoretical stuff, okay? We are going to get into QuickBooks at the end here just to show you one thing. But anyway, we're going to start with some accounting rule basics. Uh, and what I mean by that is what the latest accounting rules are called. I'll give you a hint. They're called Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, or GAP is the acronym. We're going to talk about those. Um, and those we'll be looking at um to decide to help us understand when we're supposed to book grants. So we're going to need to learn and we're going to teach you how to understand what you need to decide before booking. Uh, and there's actually three questions. I'll say that again. Three questions. I'll say that one more time. Three questions that you need to answer about a grant. And the answer to those three questions will determine when you book it into your financial statements and how you book it onto your financial statements, all right? So the first of those three questions is, is the grant really a grant 
or is it an exchange transaction? A grant is where you're given something. An exchange transaction is where you give somebody, you give something back to the person that gave you something. So it's an exchange. That's more like a service or a product. That's like a sale. So like if you're a membership association, then your memberships or maybe your tickets for a conference, those are exchange transactions. Those aren't grants. Whereas a grant is where you're not really getting something. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not really giving something back to the people who gave you the money. I'll explain later. Okay, that's the first question. The second question is, if you decide that it is a grant, then you've got to determine whether the grant is conditional or unconditional. And that determines when you book it. And we'll talk about what conditional versus unconditional grants mean. You also have to determine whether the grant is restricted or unrestricted. And that also is something you'll need to know in order to determine when to book it. So those are the three questions. We're gonna go through those three questions. You'll need to apply them to every single solitary grant that you have, all right? To determine when and how to book it, okay? Um, we'll look at when to book it. We'll look at how to book it. And then at the very, very end, we're gonna look at a problem um, and we're going to show you how to fix it in QuickBooks. This is if you get a grant in right at the end of the year that's for a future year. If you book it into income, it makes your books look awful. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Put it in the chat. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Where you get money in, you book it. It's for a future year. It makes it look like your books are really, yeah, it's, yeah. So that kind of a thing. So we're going to talk about that. All right. So that's what the agenda is going to be today. Um, I'm trying to think, I feel like there was something else I needed to say about that. Um, ah, no, but there was a poll that I wanted to do. I'm going to go ahead and do a poll real quick. I think I have polls here. Maybe I don't. I yeah. thought I had polls for this class. No, but they can type it in the chat. Oh, okay. Tell me what software you're using. Are you using... QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, or are you using something else like Sage or in uh, um, um, Peachtree or uh, Intact or, yeah, so somebody's using Sage right there. So, yeah, mostly it's QuickBooks. I just want you guys to see most people use QuickBooks Online, uh, but there are a few people that do something else. And again, this is seminar is or this webinar is for everybody. doesn't matter what you're using. Okay. So here we go. Uh, yeah, NetSuite. One person is using NetSuite. NetSuite can be kind of expensive. All right. Um, one thing I do want to tell you is if you are using QuickBooks, it looks like a lot of you are, we've got a webinar coming up next month where we're going to walk through step-by-step -step how to enter and track expenses for restricted grants if you are in QuickBooks Online and also if you are in QuickBooks Desktop. The seminar is normally $179. We're giving you $30 off. Uh, you have to put in that code, which is TS30. We'll talk about it later, okay? So uh, that's something that you might want to look at. But let's get into what we're going to be learning today. All right. The first thing I need to explain to you is who and what decides the accounting rules, okay? The ones that we're going to use to figure out when to book grants, okay? Okay. Uh, Lori wants to know if the view behind me is for real. Uh, what do y'all think? Put it in the chat. I know I'm on vacation, but I told you I was in Vegas. What do you think? You think that's real? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not real. I'm in a hotel room right now. Uh, all right. So it is real somewhere, but it's not where I'm at. So anyway, thank you, Connie. See, Connie thinks like I do. All right. So um who and what decides the accounting rules, okay? So here comes with the parade of acronyms. So I know this isn't necessarily what you thought you were to be learning, but let's learn this because you do accounting and you should, okay? What are the accounting rules that are accepted in the United States of America? Somebody tell me, put it in the chat. What are the accounting rules that are accepted? It's GAP, that's right. And GAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting principles. Now, there are principle, and there's 10 of them, kind of like the Ten Commandments. Now, the funny thing is that that's what America does. The entire rest of the world 
uses something else. Does anybody know what the entire rest of the world uh, uses? Um, IFRS, yes, which is IFR. What is that? International Financial, I don't know what that stands for. But anyway, uh, I can't remember. I should have looked at it. But of course, right? America has their own special rules, right? But they are trying to make them as close to IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, oh, my gosh. Eric did uh, his master's thesis on U.S. changing to IFRS. Probably something we should be doing. Absolutely. So who decides what gap is? Who decides what gap is? Put it in the chat. FASB. FASB stands for the Financial Accounting Standards Board. There are seven members of that board, and those seven members decide what the rules are that are considered generally accepted accounting principles. All right? And they do this by writing them down, okay? They don't just talk to them about them, they write them down. And they write them down, I try and think, make things as easy sounding as possible. They write them down through something called an ASC, ASCs, which is stands for Accounting Standards Code or Accounting Standards Codification. But basically those are the legalese type of rules that will explain what the gap principles are because there's only 10 principles and then the rules are kind of like the gory details of how to follow the principles, okay? Um, the ASC is the only authoritative source for United States gap. The thing is they're legalese, they're wordy, they're technical. Nobody knows how to read them. So therefore, except maybe Eric, um, so therefore, they are explained through something called ASUs. ASUs are accounting standards update. These are the things that you can read. They're like articles and they explain the ASCs and they give examples of how things, how you would apply the rules, okay? So just again, the parade of acronyms, GAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, who decides those? The Financial Accounting Standards Board. By putting out ASCs, which are the legalese rules themselves, and the ASUs, which are the articles that explains the ASC. Are you all ready to take the, C the CPA exam? Um, so Maria says, hopefully those seven people aren't getting wined and dined by people. Um, and just for the heck of it, here are the seven people, all right? <laughs> you know, I like to put faces, okay? That first guy, what's his name here? Uh, Richard Jones, he's the head dude, all right? He's the head dude. James, I'm a little concerned about James. He didn't smile. Uh, everybody else seems to be smiling. James, I don't really know about. But anyway, so these are the seven people that if you get mad at what I'm about to tell you, you can blame them, okay? <laughs> Are we cool with that? All right. How's everybody doing? You doing okay? Because we're about to get a little deeper. We're about to get a little deeper. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. Let's see. A little deeper. Okay. This one's going to blow your mind. Do you have to follow generally accepted accounting principles? What do you think? Do you have to follow GAP? Is that like a rule? Are you going to be thrown in the trash if you do or thrown in jail? You don't necessarily have to follow GAP. You don't have to necessarily follow GAP. Okay, so the person who thinks they have to follow GAP, it's a maybe. Okay, when would you have to follow GAP? Well, if you are getting an annual audit review or compilation, that's a report generated by your accountant that is in accordance with GAAP. You see, you can get an audit done in other than GAAP basis, okay? The accounting gods are not requiring you to get an audit, and they certainly aren't requiring you to get an audit in GAAP basis. It's the funders or the states that would decide they want an audit in accordance with GAAP, okay? So um, if you're getting an audit, 
review or compilation that is in accordance with GAAP, um, uh, or you have to generate a report at all that has to be in accordance with GAAP. And either a grantor or a state might require it for reporting, okay? Um, now, the other thing that I want you to understand is if you notice, let me see here if I can do this now. Okay, you see how I've got the word report highlighted and underlined the word report? Gap reporting is what you need to stick to, okay? You don't have to do gap data entry all year long. You can simply adjust to it whenever you do a report, okay? So even if you have to report on gap basis, during the year, you don't have to do it, okay? You would just need to adjust at the end of the year. So you might say to my, you may me, Greg, why would I not keep gap all throughout the year? Why would I adjust to it at the end of the year? Because it's a pain in the butt, okay? Let me explain to you one of the reasons why you might not follow it. Gap requires many restricted grants. Listen very carefully. I know I'm trying to be funny here, but this is serious. A lot of your grants that are restricted, gap requires them to be booked into revenue as soon as you get the award letter. Now, there are exceptions. We're going to go through that. But in general, a lot of your restricted grants, if you're going to keep gap books during the year, you're supposed to book them into revenue as soon as you get the award letter, even if it's for future years. Now, that is going to make your books look weird because you're going to have all this income showing that's for next year. All right. So you may choose not to book the future revenues until the funds are received and then adjust it at audit time, okay? And yes, Maria, gap reporting, true gap reporting, generally accepted accounting principles, requires you to book your revenues even before you've received the money, which is called accrual-based reporting. OK, which means every time you get an award letter, you would have to book an invoice in QuickBooks. All right. And then it makes your books look weird and blah, blah, blah. So you may decide not to do it during the year and just do it at the end of the year at audit time. All right. So. I will tell you once again, there are some states that require gap reporting. One of them is Texas. One of them is New York. One of them is California. So if you were in these three states and you're like, well, wait a second, I thought we had to keep gap according to the state for reporting only. So at the end of the period, you may have to adjust before you report to any outside body. All right. Adrian is already confused. Adrian, what is your question? We were told we had to keep gap if we file a 990. Aaron, completely wrong. Completely wrong. Whoever told you that is lying. All right. Anybody else? All right. So, Adrian, you're okay? I'm going to get much more detailed than this. Okay. I'm just saying, in general, you don't have to keep gap books during the year. You don't have to keep accrual books during the year. You can just adjust the gap at the end of the year for reporting purposes. Now, what we're going to learn, though, in this session is we're going to teach you what the rules of GAP are so that you can either keep them during the year or adjust to them at the end of the year if you need to. All right. How do you keep track of what would need to be adjusted for reporting? Well, Abby, I'm going to teach you how you're supposed to keep them. And then at the end of the year, we'll talk and it'll become very apparent how you just do one quick adjustment. I think you'll see what I mean, okay? All right. Um, so Eleanor says we're registered in Texas and we have to keep GAP accounting. Wrong, all right? You have to keep GAP for reporting purposes. If you choose not to enter a grant on the day that you got the award letter, the cops aren't going to come and throw you in prison, okay? It's for reporting purposes, Eleanor. All right. Okay, so we're going to teach you what the gap rules are in case you want to use them or 
so that you're ready during audit time where you can just adjust to them at audit time, or you can just sound smart at parties, okay? So all other questions regarding specifics, I want you to hold. Like Joe, I want you to hold that question, okay? So um, no more questions about the specifics of your grant and all that kind of stuff. We're gonna get to it as we go through this process, okay? Um, let's see. All right. So grant reporting guidance under generally accepted accounting principles. So now I'm going to tell you what the gap reporting requirements are so that you can either A, do them throughout the year or B, adjust to them at the end of the year for reporting purposes. All right. Are y'all ready to roll? I want to make sure everybody is still cool. Are y'all ready to go? Because we're going to get a little bit more deeper now. Okay, here we go. We're getting more deep. All right. Here's the gap rules for grants. Okay. Now, if you are an accountant type or just anal retentive, the accounting standards code or ASC, the one that rules grants is 958-605. Okay. 958-605. And the accounting standards, it's, it was called not, not for profit entities revenue recognition. And then the article the accounting standards update that explains it is 2018-08. And this has been effective since 2019. So this has been effective for a while, okay? So these are the two things that guide what I'm gonna teach you about GAP, okay? This our accounting standards article is called Clarifying the Scope and the Accounting Guidance for Contributions Received and Contributions Given, okay? All right. So this ASU asks you to, and then again, there's three, I'm going to say it one more time, three, I'm going to say it another time, three questions that you have to answer before you can determine what the gap rules are and when to book and when not to book grants, okay? So the first thing you have to determine is whether the grant is an exchange transaction or a real contribution, okay? If it's a real contribution, it's a grant. If it's an exchange transaction, it's a sale, okay? After you determine that, because if it's an exchange transaction, then none of the rules that we're gonna tell you apply and you just record the revenue as you earn it according to GAP. But if it's a contribution, then you gotta move on. There's two more questions you need to answer. One question is, is the grant conditional or unconditional? And the other question is, is it restricted or unrestricted? So you have to answer both of those questions once you determine the answer to the first question. So you got three questions you got to answer. All right. All right. So, uh, yes, an exchange transaction is a sale of a service or a product. So Sherrera that said that, good for you. All right. So based on the answers to these three questions, it says when to book it. So Linda, again, let's not get into specifics about different types of grants. I'm gonna teach you as you go, Linda, okay? So you cool, Linda, on hanging for a second? Because I think we've had two people that asked about reimbursement grants. I want you to hang for a second. We're gonna get there, all right? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is a chart that I have created all by myself you can tell I've created it because it looks ridiculous, okay? But you'll get it in your PowerPoint slides and it really does give you a flow chart for understanding when uh, and how to book stuff, okay? So the first thing you got to determine is if the contribution is a grant or not, okay? If it's not an exchange transaction, okay? Now, if the grant is not really a grant but an exchange transaction, then you book it as it's earned. And I'll tell you the difference between a grant and an exchange transaction uh, in a minute, okay? Now, if it is a grant, then you have to answer the two other questions, okay? And I think what I might do, I think, well, you know what? I'll go through this whole thing. So if it is a grant, then you have to determine if it's conditional or not. All right. Now I'm going to tell you right now, most grants are not conditional. Okay. 
And a conditional grant means that there's some huge barrier that you have to go over before you'll be able to receive the money, okay? One example of that is reimbursed-based grants. Reimbursed-based grants are grants where they are not giving you the money until you submit an invoice with a list of your individual transactions that you charge. Sometimes you can just summarize it, but you they want to know that you've spent the money before they'll give you reimbursement for it. That's a conditional grant because it has a barrier. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But anyway, most grants aren't conditional, okay? If they're not conditional, if it's not a conditional grant, and we'll talk more about what a conditional grant is, um, contributions and grants, Donna, are the same thing. They're the same thing. Yes, you get a copy of the slideshow, Joanna. Yes, okay? All right, so once you determine uh, if it's conditional or not, and most grants are not conditional. If they're not conditional, then you have to book the revenue now according to GAAP when you receive the award letter. You have to. Okay? I know you don't like it. You'll have to talk to those seven people. But unless it's conditional, you have to book all of the revenue when you got the award letter. Okay? If you want to keep GAAP. Okay? All right. Alexander, I'll get to that. All right. Even if you haven't gotten the money yet, you still have to book it if it's not conditional. Um, no questions. I'm going to say one thing. No questions for about five minutes. Then I'll do questions in the chat again. Okay. Just to make sure that I stay on track. Because all these questions are great, but I want to answer them and I can't when I'm talking. All right. So um, even if it's restricted for a future year, say you got a grant, it's it's not conditional. It's a five-year grant. You're not getting the money for five years and then it's the next five. Doesn't matter. It has to be booked now, even if it's restricted for a future period. Okay? Uh, oh, Christy, I'm sorry. That's right. Date of the award letter is when you would need to book it, not when it hits the bank. Sorry, Christy. Now, if it's a restricted grant, then you'll want to segregate it on the P&L. You want to segregate it and put it as its own separate line on the P&L. I'm going to show you that. Now, some grants are conditional. Conditional, again, means there's this huge barrier that you have to overcome, all right? So give me an example of a huge barrier. Hint, I just told you an example five seconds ago. What type of grants are usually conditional? That's not what I said, Keith, but that is an example. Reimbursement-based grants, that's right. Reimbursement-based grants is an example of a conditional grant. Again, we'll get more to the details of what conditional means in a minute. But uh, if it's a conditional grant, has the condition been met? If the condition's been met, if, if the condition has not been met, then you can wait to book the revenue. So that's why some people like grants that are conditional because they don't have to book the revenue until they've gotten the condition met. So a reimbursement-based grant is conditional and you don't book the revenue until you invoice them because you've spent the money. So you would do an invoice in QuickBooks once a month for a receivable if you are keeping your books on a cruel basis, okay? I'm going to take all these questions in about five minutes, okay? Don't ask any more questions. No more questions, okay? All right, because you've got to listen to this, okay? Now, there are three questions that we need to track. The first question is whether the money is, whether the, the transaction is an exchange transaction or a contribution, all right? So contribution versus exchange transaction. That's the first thing we're going to cover. This one people don't usually have a hard time with, but sometimes they do, okay? In general, a contribution or a grant is a gift, and the payer does not repeat, does not, one more time, does not receive any direct benefit, okay? An exchange transaction, that's a sale of a product or service where the payer does get direct benefit, okay? And they get something in return of similar value. So if you have a conference and you sell tickets to the conference and people come to the conference, that's an exchange transaction. If you sell t-shirts, 
that's an exchange transaction. If you have tuition for a school, that's an exchange transaction, okay? All right. Now, the accounting standards article gives you some examples, which they call indicators, of when something is a contribution versus an exchange transaction. But I do want to tell you that it is entirely up to how you want to interpret this, okay? These are not like black and white rules, okay? This is like guidance, and then you get to decide, and you can argue with your auditor if they disagree, all right? So the indicators that something is probably a contribution versus an exchange transaction is the person or the entity that gave you the money, they control how much they pay you versus you deciding. Uh, the payer doesn't receive any direct benefit at all. So if a foundation gives me money to help kids, the foundation's not getting the benefit. The kids are getting the benefit. So what if you sign a contract with a government? How many people have uh, contracts with the government? How many people have contracts with the government? Okay. And they're literally called contracts. And so people that don't know any better will assume, oh, well, this must be an exchange transaction because it's a contract. Wrong. Okay. If you get money from the government, I don't care whether it's a city or a county or a state or the feds, okay? Doesn't matter. If it's from the government, it's probably really a grant, okay? It's not an exchange transaction because the governmental agency that gave you the money is not receiving direct benefit, okay? For instance, I have a client that uh, pays, uh, they house foster kids, okay? And the government pays them to house these kids. The kids are in custody of the state, but the government themselves isn't necessarily getting direct benefit. So that is considered a grant. Now, if I was um, a cleaning company and the government contracted me to clean their offices, that's an exchange transaction. That's a sale. Okay. So um, anyway, enough of that. So does anybody have any questions about contribution versus an exchange transaction before I move on to what's conditional, what's non-conditional? All right. Because again, this um, our sponsorships and exchange transaction. Good question, Patty. It depends upon what they're receiving. Okay. Um, if they're basically getting a glorified uh, like thanks or something at an event, then it's more like a contribution and it should really be um, recorded as a contribution. Um, but if they're getting advertising and stuff like that, then it's more like an exchange transaction. So it's something you would want to go over the agreement. Memberships, um, uh, uh, what I'll tell you about memberships is it depends. Some memberships, they really get benefit from. They get, you know, discounts. They get like a newsletter sent to them, whatever. Other memberships, you don't get nothing. It's just basically like I'm a member of PBS because I give them money. It's just a glorified donation. Okay. Selling a brick for a new library building. Aaron, that's a donation. You were just giving them the name recognition. Just a call out thanks does not mean they really got anything. If a client reimburses you for direct expenses for a project, we spend it, then they are reimbursement. Is it reimbursement income? It is, Jane, Janine. It is. It's reimbursement income. Okay. Um, and it's like a grant. It's like a grant that's reimbursed based. Okay. All right. Uh, logo going on a t-shirt is just a shout out. No, Karen, that is still uh, an, um, um, a, a grant. It's not an exchange transaction. All right. I know I told y'all to stop asking questions and then I started answering questions, but that's just because I wanted questions about this one thing. All right. All right. So uh, let's move on. So here's a little test, okay? Here's a little test. So everyone stop what you're doing and look and answer in, um, Gary, I'm gonna get to that, okay? I'm gonna get to that. All right, so I want you to, don't ask any more questions, look at the chat here. So here we go, all right. Little test for you. Selling t-shirts, is that a contribution or an exchange transaction? It's exchange, good for you. Selling tickets to a conference, is that an exchange transaction or a contribution? 
It's an exchange transaction. Membership dues where they do get benefit. Is that an exchange transaction or a contribution? Yes. I have a I have a client that's a 501c6. It's a membership association. And the dues for the members, those are exchange transactions. Okay. Carmen, wrong. If they don't, if they do get benefit in it, it's an exchange transaction because they receive something in back of value in exchange for their membership dues. What about a membership due to PBS, a glorified donation? Is that a contribution or exchange transaction? It's a contribution, all right? What about a grant from a foundation? Is that a contribution or an exchange transaction? It's a contribution. What about a governmental contract to feed the homeless? Is that a contribution or an exchange transaction? As I said before, if it's from the government, it's likely going to be a contribution. All right. All right. So let's move on. So we talked about is the contribution a grant or exchange transaction? If it's not, you just book it as it's earned. And there's a whole separate topic on that. But we're talking about grants. So if it is a grant, is it conditional? All right. So let's talk about what that means. OK. So I think what I'm going to do is just go to the next slide and talk about what conditional means. In general, this is the biggest part of the session that you probably don't know about, because this is what they added a few years ago, okay? Um, uh, Maria uh, says that if there are tickets to a dinner, some of it is really a donation and some of it is the value that they receive, like for the food and entertainment. So should I split it between what's a contribution and what's an exchange transaction? No, no. Book them all as a big lump. Um, and then when the event occurs, you put them all into revenue. You don't put anything into revenue until the event occurs. So it's kind of like an exchange transaction. It's just that part of it they get to write off. OK. Um, all right. So let's move on. So here are the two things, and again, pay close attention, this is really important. The two things that determine whether or not a contribution is conditional or not. I'm not talking about whether it's restrictive. I'm talking about whether it's conditional. Two things. One, if there is some major barrier to overcome, and when you overcome that barrier, then you'll get the money, okay? And there's a second thing. And the donor, the person who gave you the money, the organization that gave you money, the government that gave you the money, they have a right of return. A right of return means they can either take the money back or not give funds in the first place, okay, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, okay? That is the second thing. So there's two, not one, but two, not one, but two things you got to find when you're reading the grant to determine whether or not it's restricted or unrestricted, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, conditional or unconditional, okay? So um, if it's not conditional, it's unconditional, which means there's no major barrier, all right? All right, so here is the right of return wording, and I pulled this directly off of a grant, okay, from a, the Wallace Foundation, and I highlighted, this was in the grant, Wallace reserves the right to withhold payment or terminate the agreement under any of the following conditions. And then it had all this list. That is a right of return, especially underneath here. All other grant funds must be returned to Wallace within 10 business days of the termination. So that is a right of return. So you look for that wording first. Once you look for that wording, then you've got to decide whether there's a barrier. Most grants have this wording in them. So the right of return is not really the major thing that you're looking for. It's the barrier that you're looking for. So what is a major barrier? So again, ASU 2018-08 gives indicators, and it's up to your interpretation. This is a condition, this is an indicator that uh, there, that the condition is a major barrier. It's a measurable outcome, okay? It's not um, teach the children. It's measurable. It has to be something like teach these nine classes over the next six months to these 36 children that we're picking for you, okay? That is a condition, 
all right, that's measurable. The donor controls the program activity. We're supplying you with the kids you're going to teach. We're telling you a little bit about what to teach. Only eligible participants can qualify. It's reimbursement based. I already told you any reimbursement based um, grant is automatically conditional. A matching grant, a few of you said matching grants, good for you. Matching grants are where I'm going to give you 25, but not until you raise 25. That's a measurable condition barrier. It's conditional grant, okay? Things that indicate that it's not conditional. If there's no major barriers, then it's probably not conditional. Reporting is not a major barrier. I'll say it again reporting is not a major barrier. So if you're sitting there going, well, mine says I have to do a report every month or a report every six months before I get to tell me what, tell them what happened or whatever. That's not a major barrier. That doesn't mean that it's a conditional grant. Okay. Now there is a link here to an article done in the CPA journal. And it's a good article because it kind of explains in basic terms these rules. So you can click on that and read the article at your will. Okay. Is this conditional or not? All right, here we go. This is another thing where you answer in the chat. Provide meals to 350 eligible children in a four-month period. Is that conditional? Yes, it's conditional. Now I'm going to stop real quick and say to you, listen very carefully, if it's conditional, that means when you find out that you got the award, you do not repeat, you do not book it. You only book it, in this case, as you provide the meals. Maybe once a month you're doing some invoice or something, then you book it. Okay, but you don't book the whole thing at the beginning. You book it as you provide the meals, all right? Support your soup kitchen. Is that conditional or unconditional? It's unconditional. Now it's restricted for the soup kitchen, but it's unconditional, all right? Now, if it's unconditional, listen very carefully, you have to book the whole thing in revenue according to GAP. I know you don't want to. You'll have to yell at the seven members, okay? Or don't book it until the end of the year, come audit time. But if it's not conditional, you have to book it, okay? As soon as you find out about it, okay? So that's unconditional. Train 432 state welfare recipients on work skills, five courses over five months, conditional. Support the jobs training program, unconditional. Support the jobs training program, but it's reimbursement based. If it's reimbursement based, then it's conditional. Okay. All right. Can't get final funds until there's a report. Does that make it conditional or unconditional? It makes it unconditional. All right. So all of the ones that are conditional, oh, here's another one, can't get final funds until showing a match. Is that conditional or unconditional? It's conditional. As I told you, matching grants count as conditional, just like reimbursement grace based. So anything that's conditional, these are four conditional, any of those. You don't book until you achieve the barrier. So if you're reporting, like if it's a thing that happens over a period of months, you know, 10 classes over 10 months, then you'll probably record one-tenth of the grant as you earn it, okay? That's exactly what the matching principle would tell us, Christy, okay? It does not go right out of the window for conditional grants, it goes right out of the window for unconditional grants, okay? Yeah, which we'll talk about that in a second, Christy. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, you're right. It goes right out the window, the matching principle. All right. They have a way of resolving that, and I'll show you. All right. Now, if you get the money in first for a conditional grant, this doesn't happen very often, but if you get a grant that's conditional and they give you some upfront money and it's a conditional grant, that's the only time you should book it as a liability, okay? And then you'll move it into income as you earn the money, 
Okay. There was somebody that said something about a deferred liability account. I know those of you love to use it. You can only use it for conditional grants. Has anybody got a comment or a question about this? Okay. What about advances at the beginning of the year? If it's a conditional grant, that's what I just said, you put it in as a liability. You put it in as a liability if it's an advance, and then you move it into income. But if it's not a conditional grant, you got to put the whole thing into revenue, okay? Um, can you book liability grant as customer job? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, that's the name of the liability account, Rita, deferred revenue. Yes, all right. Anybody else? We got 12 minutes left. So I want to finish this out. But this is like the most important part. All right. Okay. So here's the summary. We're going to do it again. First, you read the grant. Is it a contribution or an exchange transaction? If it's not a contribution or exchange transaction, you treat it as a sale. You book it as it's earned. If it is a contribution or grant, then you have two more questions. Question one, is it conditional? If it's not conditional, you got to book to revenue immediately, okay? And I'll show you how to segregate it on the P&L so the matching, the matching thing doesn't completely go out the window. If it is conditional, if the condition's been met, um, if the condition's not been met, then you can wait to book it. If the condition has been met, then you got to book it all now. What if you invoice for reimbursement conditional, but they have no right of return within the agreement? Um, so uh, I would be shocked that there's no right of return at all. Um, I would make the reimbursement, uh, forget about the right of return there, Valerie. All reimbursement grants I would book as conditional, okay? All right, yes, it's a very schoolhouse rock. Uh, we get money up front for giving a scholarship. The scholarship is given later. Book is deferred upon receipt and expense when given. Absolutely wrong. Because they don't have, it's not a measurable thing. They just know you're going to use it for your scholarship program, basically. It's not like they're telling you, give it to these four people. So that is not a condition, Renee. Of course, you could argue separately for me with your auditor, but I don't think it's a condition. All right. So to book the grant, um, if it's uh, unconditional, you have to create an invoice or a pledge in QuickBooks. The full amount of the award, you point it to a revenue account, and then you would record a payment against it, okay? So I'll just show you real quick. I'll go into QuickBooks. I'm going to use QuickBooks online. Um, all right. So I'm going to go to a report that I already have where I booked a receivable. You use the invoice window. We'll show you how to do it uh, in our restricted grants revenue. We'll show you how to do it more in QuickBooks. But I just want to show you, here is a P&L, and let me show you what happens. If you book something because it's unconditional and you want to keep gap during the year, look at foundation grants. Do you see how, let's see, I wonder if I can make this a little bigger for y'all. Um, hold on. Uh, there we go. So you see how foundation grants, the budget's 89000 and the actual is 263000 It's 174000 So it makes it look like you've made $170,000 when in reality, this money is for next year. If I look at this total, I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and it'll give me a detail. And you will see that we have an invoice that we booked for a grant that's for next year. It's for the next year, but because I wanted to keep gap during the year, I got a receivable for $170,000, okay? So what happens is it shows on the P&L. Let me get out of this screen. Maybe I'll just do this and do this one more time. Okay, cool. So that's why it's showing there. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and do an entry. This is my suggestion for how to fix this problem, okay? I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this.
I'll finish here in about five more minutes and then we'll start with the more with questions and I'll go over a few minutes to get the questions answered too. But I've got a journal entry. Hold on, where is it? Move this down here. Okay. I've got a little journal entry that I've already created um, that'll show you a solution to the problem when you're having to book money. And I want to segregate them. So I've got an entry here where basically I create an income account all the way at the bottom of the PL. And you can do this in any software. Um, it's called Restricted Grants for Future. It's its own separate income account. And I put it at the bottom of the PL. All right. And then I'm going to lower foundation grants. So see, during the month, I just book it to foundation grants like I'm supposed to, so I don't have to teach somebody a different way to record income. And then I do a journal entry to reallocate it at the end of the month. So I'm going to go ahead and save this journal entry. I'll go ahead and save it. All right. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at this report again. Let me just refresh the report. Whenever you're going to refresh a report in QuickBooks Online, don't go up here and, and rerun the whole page. Go up to the top of the report and click run the report. It'll just be quicker. It's just quicker. Um, let's see, I had to, one thing I changed here. All right. So now when I look at it, you can see foundation grants was way low now. The 170 is all the way at the bottom. Grants restricted for future. So I can see we've got 219. So we really kind of broke even here. This is money for the next year. That's what I mean by segregating it. Now on your audit, they put it in its own separate column, but I don't want to have separate columns in QuickBooks. And so I'm just kind of putting it down at the bottom. Now this problem reverses itself and becomes a problem in the other direction the next year, I'm going to pull up another report here. Uh, this is a budget versus actual for the next year. And now you'll see this is when we spent all the money in the next year. So it looks like we've lost 170 when in reality it was money from the previous year. So in order to keep the matching concept, in order to have the revenue in the current year, the year that it's spent, even though it had to be recorded in the prior year, I also wanted in the current year. So I created another income count called prior year grants used now. Prior year grants used now. And then I'm going to do another journal entry in the first day of the next year to move the money into... $170,000, I put it in this restricted grants for future. I put it in the very first account in the chart of accounts list under income. And, uh, oh, this is the wrong one. Hold on. It's the wrong one. Uh, I got to do the other one. Uh, oh, it's down here. Um, here it is. Uh, is this, hold on, let me see which one it is. It's this one. Okay. So what I did was I created an income account called prior year grants used now. I mean, at the very first income account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to credit that to make it go up. I do this the first day of the next fiscal year. Okay. So this would be, we end on June 30. So it'd be July 1 of 25. And then I have another account called prior year grant reversal that takes it back out. So I have one account that puts it into the PL in the current year, the year that you spent it. And then I take it right back out again because it's not supposed to be in there because I had to book it last year when we got the award letter. You can't book it twice. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go back to my PL and then I'm going to. Refresh this report. Uh, 2425. Oh, I dated it the wrong date. Hold on. Um, 24. All right. Uh, 
right? And save that. Okay, so now let's go over here and refresh the report. So you can see what it would look like the next year. So now what I have is I have prior year grants news net used now 170,000. I even put a budget in for it. So it doesn't look like I'm budgeting for zero or budgeting for losses. And so now I can see, look, I've made $95.66 and now I'm backing it right back out again. You see how I'm putting the 170 up here and I'm backing out down here. But the down here is after net operating income. So this is the thing that they really care about. So now the matching contribution, the matching is still uh, intact, all right? So the only other thing that I wanted to teach um, real quick, and then we'll take some more questions, is if it's restricted or not. So in order for a grant to be restricted, that's different from having a condition or not. A restricted grant means it has to be spent for a specific person purpose that's more than the mission, all right? So it could also be restricted for time, all right? So let me ask you this. If you get a grant that says to pay for 50% a, a of a program educator's salary, is that restricted or not? Yes, it's restricted. And yes, these have to be income accounts. In support of your organization, is that a restricted grant or not? No, it's not, okay? For your guidance center, is that restricted or not? It is restricted, it's just not very restricted. For the 2023 year, this is for a particular year, is this restricted? If it's for a particular year, it's time restricted? Yes, it's restricted, all right? So just kind of wanted to explain to you that. Now, I think I'm going to go back. I think I have, um, no, we're going to go back over here. All right. So just in closing, first, you have to decide whether the grant is an exchange transaction or uh, a contribution. If it's a contribution or a grant, then you have to decide whether it's conditional or not. If it is conditional, then if the condition has not been met, don't book it. When the condition's met, you book it into revenue. If they give you an advance, you book it as a liability. Now, if you decide that the thing is non-conditional, it's unconditional, then you have to book it. But if it's restricted, you can move it to this, you can move it to that other account that I showed you. Maybe this would be a, let me go back to just the other report, be easier to show you. Um, if it's a restricted grant, then what I do, I have to book it into revenue, but I put it all the way down at the bottom and I make it an income account, okay? And then in the following year, then I'll move it up to the top in that prior year grant used now. But as soon as you know that it is an unconditional grant, you're going to have to book it. It's just a matter of whether it's restricted and goes at the bottom or unrestricted and goes at the top, okay? So there's not really any choice in the matter, okay? So um, the gory details of getting restricted grant reports and pointing expenses to a grant and what field to use um, is all part of a two-hour restricted grant training that I'm doing in July, just for people using QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Okay, so there's a coupon for it. It's $179 normally. You're going to get $30 off. It's July, Tuesday, July the 16th for those using online and Wednesday, July the 17th for those using desktop. The code is TS30. That's TechSoup30, okay? And to sign up for it, you simply go to QuickBooks Made Easy. So you go to quickbooksmadeeasy.com. You click on Courses and Training. You go to webinars and you'll scroll down here. This is deep dive into tracking restricted grants using QuickBooks Online. Here it is again for the desktop. It's 179. Again, you put the code in at checkout, you're going to get $30 off. You got to do that by this Saturday. It says it's 90 minutes. Bill, can you make this two hours? It needs to say two hours. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up the chat. I'm also going to have Paige. Um, 
uh, come live on page uh, and tell me what your thoughts are in terms of what we have covered. And if there's something I'm missing. So, no, I think, I mean, I think it was fantastic. There was a lot, uh, there, just restricted grants, as you know, is, is just a lot um, to, to deal with. There's a lot of guidance around it, uh, a lot of nuances around it. There's just, a, there's a lot. And so, and I'm also really glad, I was going to ask you too, I'm really glad that you pulled up uh, the deep dive into tracking restricted grants webinar because there were a couple of people in the chat uh, asking for more detail about it. So I, I think um, sometimes an hour is just not enough um, for, for this webinar, although it was fantastic. Um, but, you know, an hour is a lot for, for such a, just a extensive topic. So I'm glad that you well, brought that up, and I think um, going to get a lot. Yeah. They're going to get the video. Now, I wanted to say this. So uh, there's a few things at the end. I'm going to cover this, okay? So one person was like, so I just want to make sure, can something be conditional and restricted yes usually conditional grants are restricted and usually when you've met the condition you've also met the restriction okay uh, but can you have conditional grants that are unrestricted you could okay uh can you have unconditional grants that are restricted absolutely you do that all the time you have that all the time okay laura wants to know if i'm understanding it correctly would a conference sponsorship be considered an exchange transaction that is conditional and un unconditional and unrestricted so if if you say something is an exchange transaction laura you don't even talk about whether it's conditional or restricted that's only for grants okay so if it's an exchange transaction you book it as it's earned you don't have to worry about whether it's conditional or not all right but a sponsorship isn't earned until the event happens okay so i put it in liability until the events happened all right anybody else got a question uh let's see this is so convoluted it really isn't janice if you say it's convoluted that means i'm not doing my job right OK, so Janice, um, I want to find out what it is that you um, are asking about. Stephanie, can you please show us again the debits and credits of restricted journal entries for the matching? So I didn't teach any restricted journal entries for matching. She says it was rushed at the end. So, Stephanie, why don't you reach out to me personally and I'll just spend some time with you alone? I don't think I rushed, but let me try and help you. Um, Graceful Seven, how do you decide when a contribution that is not used during the year ends up as restricted net asset rather than deferred? So contributions, um, the only time you put something as deferred is if it's a conditional grant and they gave you advance money. If it's a conditional grant, as you earn it, you invoice them and apply the deferred revenue to the invoice. That's what you should do. Um, Let's see. Uh, Ashley, do you need to create an invoice for each grant received, despite whether it's conditional, restricted, or exchange or not? Okay. You would do invoices if you want to keep gap based. Yes. Regardless of as soon as you get the award letter, unless it's conditional, in which case you do the invoice as soon as you've earned the money, Ashley. Um, let's see. What else in there? Greg, Can Karen you quickly? German wants to know if encumbered and restricted mean the same thing. Uh, maybe. Uh, encumbered means it's meant for a particular purpose. So I guess that yes, it would be. Torrance, can you quickly comment on how restricted grants and release of restrictions could affect the 990? It's off topic. That's fine. Yeah, it, it what you book is the same for the 990, but there is a couple of different places on the 990 where you book the restrictions that aren't spent yet versus the ones that are. But um, Janice says she feels like she's going to forget this as soon as it's over. That's why we're giving you the recording. Um, the discount of code again, let me give you that, is... There it is. The discount code is TS30. Okay. Uh, Cindy, I recorded a pledge last year that was restricted to one event. The donor decided this year to apply that 
pledge to a different event. We've received the funds. I still show the pledge is outstanding. I can't seem to do the AGE to move from one receivable account to another. You need tech support with us. You need to get tech support from QuickBooks, okay? Um, my only questions about the three accounts you created is how does that translate to the equity section on the statement of financial position for temporarily restricted net assets? So um, it doesn't. Um, uh, well, actually, the stuff at the bottom needs to go in the temporarily restricted section, the grants restricted for future. Yes, you received the slides for the, for the class. Um, Virginia, do you teach new executives on how to structure the grants? Yes, we can do it through tech support or you can buy an hour at a time from me. Um, uh, TechSoup's webinars are free. My restricted grants webinars aren't. Um, let's see. Yes, you received the slides. Should all unrestricted grants go into the same income account until spent? Uh, you could put them in separate ones, Steve, if you want to. For ease, I like to put them in the same. Uh, Jenna, if I receive a ward letter saying 52424 that says grant funds will be fully expended during the term fiscal year 25, does that mean I book it in 24 as restricted but can't use it until 25? That's exactly right, Jenna. Uh Yes, that's exactly right. In your July webinar, how will you identify if it's restricted or not in desktop? The same way I would do in QuickBooks Online, Holly. It's the same way. Um, are the journal entries you show us based on what you do only at end of year or on a case-by-case -case basis? Those journal entries to kind of segregate things, some people do it at the end of the year, some people do it at the end of the month. It depends upon um, how detailed you want to be. Cynthia, this is my first time working in nonprofit. I'm still learning. I don't have accounts set up like you. I've been doing this for seven months. So any other webinars you have would help me. Go to the Restricted Grants webinar in July. All right. I think I'm done. Um, uh, will you cover two-hour course government standards? Uh, Christy, what are you referring to? You're referring to indirect cost allocation methods and stuff? I'm not going to do that. Um, if you don't do GAP but report as GAP, do you check the box in the 990 that says organizations that follow FASB ASC 958. Yeah, check that box. Um, which government standards? What are you referring to, Christy? Are you talking about like a, a Section A20, 128 Yellow Book audit? Uh, no. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Aretha, we are over by nine minutes. Thank you for oh. letting me be over, Aretha. All good. Incredible. And great questions, everybody. Great questions. This was awesome. Again, you'll get the video replay tomorrow with the slides. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, guys.